Come on. Okay. Good. Okay. So, I guess we don't uh, we don't have any agenda to approve. Um, so, we have orders which we've just had and signed. And so, any other adjustments to the agenda? Not so, right? So, got anything to say, Ron? The public contents? I didn't hear you. You want to make any comments? That's why I didn't hear you. <laughs> no, anything in general? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. What I normally do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, new business abstract brand list extension. That's what the guys are here for, so I think you probably explained and hopefully yep. the yep. public can so, hear what you're saying. So we, uh, we have a mic right here, I guess. Okay. So um, as warned, we, we lodged the abstract grand list on Monday the 3rd, so one week ago today. We, we had printed out the abstract, we lodged it, we sent out individual notices for a change of appraisal to every single taxable property owner because it's a rebound year. After they were mailed out, we discovered we had two problems with the grand list, the abstract grand list. One was we we had the wrong grievance date on there, so it was more of a typo, but we had the third on there should have said the 18th for the date of the beginning of grievance. Um, but more importantly, then we discovered also that the, the actual values were wrong for about a third of all properties because of a software error. And we've been fighting this software issues for a while. We've got documentation going back months about this. We thought we had it done, but we thought we were done with it, but we weren't. So after talking, so as soon as we realized that, we were talking to our district advisor. We were talking with VLCT. Uh, basically, they said, okay, you're, you've got a defective abstract grand list. Here's what you've got to do. Go on. Doug, I'm not sure who the players are there. I know VLTC is your software vendor. No, VLCT is the Mont League of Cities and Towns. Oh, okay, yes. So they're okay. our, one of our legal yes, advisors. Right. Yeah. Um, PDR is the, department, is the state direct uh, property review and the uh, property valuation and review. Okay. So that's like the tax department. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, there's a single key software that everybody in the state must use to communicate with the state. That's what we've been having trouble with, those, the software vendor. Okay. So um, I'm just going to say we've got documented problems that go back a ways. We thought we were good, but we weren't. Mm -hmm. So the steps recommended by both VLCT and the tax department was that we file for an immediate 30-day ex uh, extension. That's the kind of the one size extension you get. So even if we were able to turn this around quickly, we still have a 30-day extension. Okay. Other deadlines start triggering based on when we do actually file. But at this point in the game, I think our best, uh, our best uh, case going forward is we continue to verify that things are correct now. Because on one hand, we think, it's, we think it, the issue's been corrected, but we basically printed out all the paperwork on everybody and we're checking it against other lists to make sure that we absolutely, this is what it should be. <clears throat> so that process is gonna take us a few more days. Um, so things could go as quickly as if we feel like we've got everything verified properly by late in the week, we could print everything out, stuff envelopes over the weekend, and, mail again one week from today. There would be a new grievance date, and if, and if it went that way, then as I just described, that formal grievance would then start on July 2nd. And then we would do our grievance cases, and in talking with Dave, I believe that even if it started a full month later, that we would have time enough to not impact the tax bills going up, and I think that's like the next painful thing that mm -hmm. could pop but how long does the grievance period last? So if it starts on the second, how long do people have? It starts out the way it's written is you um, 
we basically you indicate here's a day of grievance and we give hours during that day and then we, there's a phrase that's like from day to day thereafter until all grievances are heard. So in a year like this when we have reappraisal they say 10 to 20 percent of people are going to grieve. So that's 150 or 300 people which is a lot. And so we did the math and we said, okay, if we start hearing 15 cases a day, which is as much as we could possibly do, that's not everything, that's just hearing them. Mm -hmm. That's a 15 minute uh, session for them to tell us what their problem is. We make sure we understand their issue. Then we still have to go out and look at it, make some determinations. <coughs> we have to um, file meeting minutes. We get a lot of other paperwork we gotta do for that. but. The concern would have been it just blows out too long, and it really depends on how many people grieve. So we start, we're going to start, let's say, for these purposes on the second, we would hear people on the second and third, take a break for the 4th of July, come back, just start hearing cases as, as much as we can, and in the meantime other people will be looking, well, there's be a lot of work going on, but there's, there's the, hearing the case, is hearing the grievance it has to have two listeners to do that. But while we're doing that, there's efficiencies we can have, like other people can be going out and doing like uh, inspections if we need to do another inspection. Mm -hmm. A lot of places we didn't get into. The people we've been talking to already, well, this isn't right, this isn't right, and did we get into your house? No, you didn't. I'm like, okay, so that's, we're kind of expecting that stuff to happen. So we're gonna try to revisit as many as we can. It's practical to verify stuff. And, like that, but it's hard to say how long it will actually take because in a grievance year, we ex you expect a lot of traffic. And the very fact that we had this error probably means we're going to get more traffic because people aren't getting warm and fuzzy feeling about it. So we want to make sure we get it right the second time and everybody gets a chance to grieve. So I have a question. Going back to the, the main problem. Do you know what the grand list is? I think I do, but I don't want to tell you a number until we've finished no, this. I'm not looking for a number. I'm okay. just asking if you know it or not. So I believe we do. Okay, so then, and I want everything, every one of these things you put in an envelope is a part of that, and it should add up to that number. Is that, isn't there a way to cross check? Uh, that's, not, that's not quite right. No? Because this is a change of appraisal going out. This doesn't take current use into account. Now, although if you are current use, you've got a separate current use thing. Mm -hmm. This doesn't take into account any contracts the town has, like with North Harlan LLC Hydro, for instance. It doesn't take, so there's other things that the grand list, so veterans exemptions, for but instance. But you still should be able to reconcile all of that. That's right, that's right. And, and, and I do have and, a number. And, and, and what I'm getting at is, is some way to double check to make sure, just like, any that's accounting, right. that's right. The bottom line is right. Yes. And everything in it is right. And we are going to the very most basic level of that. We printed out everybody's information on Friday. It took us all day to print it out. And we're cross checking against a couple of other lists to make sure that that's right. Yeah. But with the nature of this particular issue, the 411 form, which is like the summary of the grand list that we used to calculate, was also wrong because of where the program originated. Yeah, I can't so, see how you get a grand list if the basic numbers are wrong. Right. And, and, and that was part of the problem. It was not a complete agreement, and yeah. that's the issue. That was, that's the biggest number one thing. So we started, we identified early on, like last week we found out on Thursday. By the end of the day, Thursday, we've been working with a software company and we think we got it right. But just to make sure, we're doing the whole thing longhand, if you will, yeah. printing it all out. Are other towns having the same problem? Um, some other towns do. We've been having, I've been focused on us, and I gotta tell you though, for months we have been having some issues and getting them resolved as we thought we were, but obviously there was still something hanging out there. If I could, Gordon, if I could follow up on that question, because sure. I, I uh, um, I'm, I'm sure you both have a, <coughs> sinking feeling in your stomach with this uh, kind of, uh, I but I, I, find it, it, I find it troublesome that um, you sense there were errors, you were working with the vendor, uh, and yet there was a launch that the vendor either assured you or, I mean, was, was there any testing on their part that could convince you or is it really just going back to uh, 
Well, with the time frame that we had before, most of the testing was on our part to make sure mm. uh, these various things. We ran reports, for instance, to look at, once we thought we had some real values, the first step we did was we checked what the system was telling us compared to recent sales. So that's one of our steps anyway, because all the new appraisals must be tied to recent sales. Mm -hmm. And we verified that and said, OK, we, we think we're accurate. We're actually looking pretty good on that. Right. So then we felt confident to move forward to the next step, which was to look at all the values for everybody. So we looked at the we looked at that in a couple of different ways. We looked at the percent change before and after. Mm -hmm. Some people changed a lot because you had, a, say, a property was just land and now you built a house. So the percentage that went really way up. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff in the middle was pretty flat, like essentially unchanged. Right. And then the ones that went down the most tended to be either somebody had split their property or something like that, sold off most of their land, right. or they were previously over-assessed. Right. But, but I, I guess, um, let me back up a little bit. Uh, what was the error? I mean, do we know, or is the vendor able to sort of say, this line of code caused this? Or we're not into that level of stuff yet. I'm, we're, we have a situation where uh, we're working with them. They do have a log. We can go back and look at key sure. strokes and see what happened. Yeah. We've done that a little bit. Right. But the main, the timely thing to happen was for this process to happen in parallel. So we need to get an extension. That's like the number one thing. Right. Then as we continue to work these issues, right. We at least are legally protected enough to yeah. do that. Yeah, no, I, I, you're absolutely correct. I mean, there was multiple issues tonight. Yeah. To the but I think we have a, a fairly good handle on what didn't happen that should have happened. Right. That should have happened. Um, but again, we want to just start at a very granular level by printing everything out and double checking everything at that. that what, what do you level. double check it to? We're double checking it to a list generated by. Software by the other software. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, um, I get to play the hand on doubt with. Yeah. So yeah, the best we can do is take this report that says what changed from last year, what parcels changed compared to last year. Yeah. That's what we're checking right. against. Right. Everybody's uh, I, 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 parcel. So I, there's you, and I. You know, kudos to you guys for sort of doing the legwork. When I walked in the other day, Greg, you were up to your eyeballs with lists and cross-checking, and you were too busy. Yeah, doing it the old-fashioned way. Fashion way. You know. No, I understand yeah, that. Look, uh, yeah, and I, I just hope parsing. that the vendor is doing the same thing right now. You know, are, are they? We've been pulling them in tomorrow. i got another series of calls. We, yeah. uh, we've been in contact with them. They know we're not thrilled. They know. Yeah. That's why I've been working with them yeah. on um, a regular basis. So you answered the question, and we're not really sure if if other towns are experiencing the same type of software glitch at this point. I, I don't know the other but partly it's we are pushing it hard because we're doing a reval. Yeah. This okay. is gonna find any mistake. You're like we're just wading right into it. We're gonna ex we're gonna push this as hard as anybody pushes it right. in a reval year. I, I can say this. I, I do remember uh, Tom and Clarissa both mentioning a couple of months ago, they were experiencing the same glitch concerning outbuildings yeah. um, in so, other towns. Yeah. There's, there's a limit. If we, so. on, a, on a granular level, there's probably 25 issues we've been working on. Yeah. And some of them, the answer is yes, we verified yeah. that you have this yeah. problem. Yeah. And the fix is something else. You know, when you talk to a programmer, he's worried about programming. Yeah. I said something to Craig, and so, uh, just briefly. I mean, I, there, there's a rule of thumb in programming that you have to sort of build a fence around where you think the error, error is. And it sounds like these guys are just waiting in a, in a mud field right now. I'm not sure where to look. Um, you know. They've been responsive to us when we're doing stuff. I mean, I think I you know, made a point like it was a month ago or whatever it was. I'm working on Sunday and you know, talking to the programmer. You know, he, he responded from home. He went upstairs at 7 yeah. o'clock on a Sunday morning. and working through it, but it's like... Right. And you've given the vendor an error list? Yeah, we've been working on stuff. As as I can, I send them screenshots of what I'm seeing for errors. Uh, and can they reproduce the error? On the in some cases, yes, in some cases, no. So we've certainly been working this, yeah. okay. but we're also up against a, 
We're in a canoe. We're in the rapids. Here we go. I, no, I, I don't have a chance. I, to again, stop I can, I can, I can run with this one because that's obviously I spent thirty something years doing this. Right. Um, and, and so we, it's like I said, there's a uh, a log in there. We can look at keystroke by keystroke of what happened and when and all sure, that kind of stuff. Sure. But the focus is more on the immediate. Uh, well, immediate if, if it's appropriate, I'd be happy to try to assist you without getting in your way. Thanks. I think we're working closely with them, and yeah. I think, um, like I said, right now my main thing is to make sure that we have that, that we, the listers, are all satisfied that, right. that things are correct before we send this out again. Right. And no, there's, I, there's I would say to, I'm sitting here tonight. Uh, I wouldn't. I would vote don't send them out. You know, we're not making that vote tonight. But I, I, you, you I'm not, you, and I'm not ready to send them out. No, I, I understand. But I do need to. Um, and we so have 30 days from whenever we sign this. Mm -hmm. uh, 29 days, 28 Excuse days. Uh, so from when you sign that, hopefully that you will sign it. Actually, is a different version because I wrote this to the select board, and later today I learned that. So what I really need to do is send my letter to Jill Remick, the head of PVR. So, so if you approve this, sign. we get a signature on this. That's what you'll end up needing. This yeah. is what they want Sorry, to yeah. have in order to act at the state level. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially the same thing I wrote here, but there's a room for sure. Um, and, and this meets, I believe this meets all the legal requirements to do this. So we've yeah. cited the proper statutes by which we are acting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And in talking with people at the state today, we should get same day approval um, on this. Yeah. Would we be, how do we notify our, our all the taxpayers by, by mail? So what I, and I also asked questions about this with VLCT as well as with, uh, at the state level. Um, so tomorrow we already have a, an informational meeting scheduled to, uh, for at 7 o'clock tomorrow upstairs. Yeah. So at that meeting I wanted to talk about all this and not, you know, I'm trying to be transparent about this. But we didn't want to speak anything before you had approved it. Right. So, um, what I would do, pending approval, is send this out, get this started at the state level. But I would like to put something out tomorrow on the listserv, and the, we can put something on our website and talk to it tomorrow night at the meeting. But what about people that aren't on the listserv? So, people who aren't on the list, that, that was my concern. Are yeah. we only telling some people and not all people? Right. But the intent is. As soon as we possibly are confident, we're going to send out another notice that says right on it and in it that this is, you know, this over supersedes the old notice. There'll be a little explainer about what happened in it. And so it'll be an amended certificate of uh, change of appraisal, excuse me, amended change of appraisal notice. We will lodge an amended grand list on the same day we mail it out. It'll be the same thing, just two weeks later we're repeating everything we just did on last Monday. So that we have to legally warn it, we have to put no, uh, ads in the paper, uh, we need an extra document, a certificate of amendment, we need to have our newspaper ads run for a full two weeks uh, instead of just a few days and stuff. So there's, there are some other slight changes, but it's of a similar nature. As sure. We did. Sure. Sure. Um, I don't know what others think about notifying everyone or not. Um, What's that? You know, what are your thoughts on? Well, they will be notified because everybody's getting a new appraisal. Well, so everybody would, will be getting a new what appraisal. If, if well, someone has a wrong one right now, and they're sitting there with a wrong one on their right. desk, uh, and so they're they don't suffering. know it's wrong. They don't or, know it's wrong, but um, so we're going to try to notify people as best we can. So after, so I guess the long story short is, we get approval first. Now we can now we can operate okay. legally. Yeah. Yeah. We let people know what's going on. To expect another letter in a week or so, yeah. as best we can. But we don't have to send another letter out to Colorado to those people to say, hey, you're going to get a letter in a week. It's okay to like just do it as soon as we can. When that second one goes out, it will explain the situation. Okay. It clearly indicate that the previous notice was an error, and here's the new one. Although I do expect that the majority of people, you know, it's about a third of them changed. So two thirds, by definition, didn't change. Yeah. So, but we have to just essentially the cleanest legal way to do it is to start over. We have a new grievance date. 
we've been talking to a lot of people already about grieving. We captured all their names. Nobody will be denied the chance to grieve. That's the real thing that we need to make sure. Phil, so, so nobody knows whether they're right or wrong. Yeah, I, I know and, that's right. And even those, say, those that are right I to say much. don't know that. Well, well, we couldn't say anything until we, we talked to legal counsel. It's like, you know what, we shouldn't say anything until we talk to you. I mean, last Friday, if we put something out, that would put you guys on a weird place. And I didn't sure, no, do that, anything that. like that, or set ourselves up for I mean, I think it's, whatever you say, it's, say, minimal. You know, there's, there's blaming on the software. So there's software glitch and, and um, that's the primary thing, although, in all honesty, the fact we got that date wrong, that typo, that would be just as, we'd have to do it sure. all over again anyway. Yeah. So that being said, yeah. the real thing was about the software glitch and yeah. making sure that we have got the right values going yeah. on this time. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's not where we want to be, but, no, I, but I, the I, fact I, that there's a, a scenario like this, we're not the first ones to do it, and yeah. when I was working through this, both the software guys and the people at the state were saying, oh, wow, right. you should have heard this one this, a couple of years ago, so and did this, that was really bad, you know. Yeah. So we, we can the fact this. that there is now a, a process to clearly deal with this, I think that's, legally, we're trying to just jump back on the rails in that way as best we can, and move forward with, really matters here, so. Do you need a motion or anything? Do you need to make a motion to extend the, the abstract grant list 30 days? Um, and to basically that's all. You can give that oh, let me just see the, where's the letter. No, you got I think we want to say we're going to. No, that the taxpayers will be notified. Of the uh, correction. So. Um, basically, you want to uh, make a motion. Um, Granting, a th you know, basically granting the 30 day expansion to, to the listers to correct the grant list and we to prove our request and then I think that's, yeah. we can send that. Yeah, to, to extend yeah. the abstract to grant list 30 request. days. Yeah. yeah. Got that? We'll see. I make the uh, motion that. Uh, we approved, we approved that the listers <clears throat> extend the 2019 abstract grand list by 30 days. I think that will suffice. Okay. I'll second, second. Okay, so we're all in favor of this. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so <coughs> we'll sign this. I can start. You can get it. Yes, he does. Okay. He's hanging on the bottom there. Yeah, just, just the bottom where it says select board approval. Get it down there because we have a little bump in that nice space. When you do the manual checks now, <coughs> how do you how do you know those numbers are solid? Are those from Different laws. Or after after going through, that's right. Of course, the, the act of printing out the cost sheet actually forces a calculation. Mm -hmm. And it was those calculations weren't all done, we need to hang on which is more of the nature of the problem. So we went through stuff with the VP of Denmark and. He took over my computer by remote control. We spent a couple hours getting through everything and right. banging on it and make sure it looked right. But that was the only thing that we got off. It was comparing Canada. Uh, comparing to last year's to this year to see if things changed. Did we, did we change the mode yet of this, how we're using your software? 
Are you changing the mode? Yeah, is the software still here or is it up in, up in wherever it is? Uh, we have local, it runs off of our server. Our local version but, here? Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's constantly updated by. Yeah, you know, so, so they're thinking, you know. You, you the really you, long term, I mean, the state is looking for a replacement for right. the software. Right. Has been put out requests for quotes and they're in the middle of that process. But I mean, something to think about is with your log, when we started noticing errors, what version was it and how many versions have gone on since? You know, it, we, we update, you know, for a while, they, you know, they update fairly often. Yep. So we, we're, we have the current version, we're always working with the current version. Yeah. We're, it's easy to notify people if you don't have the right version so that, right. you know, we, we definitely have the right version to this. And, we've been, yeah. and so like I said, some of these issues show up everywhere for all towns or something and some, we're still trying to figure out if it's just us using this in a way that other people aren't somehow that right. is causing this and whatever. So they've certainly been working with us, but it's, yeah, plan A did not involve this. Yeah. yeah, it's just that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anything else that we can do to help at this point? Um, I think not. I you could attend the meeting tomorrow night uh, upstairs. Um, we're uh, so, like I say, I, I plan on putting a statement out tomorrow. Yeah. Where people, people around here know what's happened. And what, was, was, how moving forward. was tomorrow night perceived as the first grievance night? No, no it was put out as an informational meeting. An informational meeting. And, and originally, we said this time now that we're in was an informal grievance time. So, right. a lot of people were coming in. Saying they got issues, we're, kept, we're making sure we have their name and contact information, so we're not we're dropping anybody. But we've also been explaining we had this issue we have to deal with first before we can. So if I'm sitting there tomorrow night and I ask you, is my my tax bill right along? You wouldn't be able to answer that. If well, a you don't have a tax bill yet. Oh, this is a change of appraisal. No, we get that question a lot. So this is a change of appraisal that okay. you've got to notice. Yeah. If there's a chance that it's not right. I'm not going to start. Digging in with it until we know we're talking about the right number. Okay, good. We would encourage you to come into our office or, or call us. To right. And, and so, like during a normal grievance, yeah. then we could sit down and open up and talk about, make sure we have the inventory right, make sure right. we understand the issue, the people's individual issues. Okay. But tomorrow night is more about general information. If there's questions, you know, we'll be fielding questions, and if it's something that's you know, applicable to other people, we'll. Do our best to answer it. It's very much specific to one parcel. Yeah. That's not the form. Mm -hmm. I, I just, my biggest fear right now is that you guys are going to do all the bench testing and heavy lifting, and there's still going to be the software engineers are not going to have addressed the problem. And, and, oh, yeah. Some of them, I know that that's true because they're not software decisions per se, but a assessment decision that goes into the programming. That goes into the rules of, of the, the rules. Of, you know, so there's the programming no. basics, but then there's also how they treat things. And, so yeah. and that takes longer and it's more complicated. It's documented, it's known, but okay. yeah. getting, into, getting into the weeds more, more than right. trying to stay on the, focused on what's yeah, it. You can run down a rabbit hole real quickly and it'll be the wrong one. So yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. Is the constable doing the uh, animal control? Kate, uh, Kate Rowell is still animal control. <clears throat> so she doesn't do, she doesn't follow up on these rather than the constable? Or? So I think, uh, this is written by Clyde, but I think that this Thank you. He's got it to the constable, um, oh, constable or police officer. Um,
Tammy did it before, but she might have been both. So this is basically saying that this is this is to yes, she did both. But this is basically telling James that they are to be impounded, and if they cannot be found at a home, James can shoot it. Or to be blunt, dispose of it in a humane way is what it says. Yeah, I think it's passing the heavy, the heavy part off to the to James or a police officer. To be destroyed. I mean, it's it's a. It's an old law, so, but we haven't. We've never done it. We haven't done that in my tenure anyways, but that's essentially what it's saying. We've never done it. So I think that's why it's addressed to James. We need the, I guess we need the authority to do that. We have to have a, I suppose it's a deterrent, or it's a, it's a, telling people that owning a dog is a serious thing. Do it right. But you're right, Matt. Kate will, if there is one out and about, the animal control officer has impounded it and brought it to Upper Valley. Those that list is just unlicensed dogs, though, isn't it? On the back. I believe so. Probably. Probably. Yeah. So you guys need to make a motion on that as well. Let's see if we can sign up. But. Still not getting the gist of it. So if someone doesn't have a license, we shoot the dog. It's actually, yeah. It's pretty straightforward. We have the, we have the authority to do that. <laughs> you're, you're giving the constable don't, don't, the authority don't, to do don't, that. Don't use the well, word. I understand that. I hope James does. <laughs> I hope so too. But I mean, I, I would say that we, we. Should there be a problem or something? I, I, I didn't notice that in there. It's essentially, state statute, and it is what it is. And you need okay. to sign it, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and brief, but um, uh, it does give the authority to the constable and or police officer to handle an unlicensed dog mm -hmm. in such manner. Okay. Can we try for a motion, Matt? We've got oh, boy. Today. I can hand it right back to you, Phil, because that I was going to give it to Gordon. I, I don't think it's there. I don't Thanks, Liz. <laughs> Let's make this abstra as abstract as we can. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with the dog warrant. The dog warrant. And I'm looking for a number. Um, the dog warrant it has signed on the 10th of June. 2019. So I don't see any identifier. Does that do it for you? You can say that, uh, that the 2019 unlicensed dog warrant is approved as presented by the town clerk. The town clerk is responsible for licensing the dogs. If they're not licensed by a certain time, then he hands over a dog warrant to the constable of the town, telling him that they can be impounded or can't find a home for them. Do we need to say all that? And that's, what's, that's what the whole statute says. All you need to do is accept the 2019 unlicensed dog warrant as presented by the town court. Okay. Make a motion to let the select board, um, select board what? Represent? Receive? What was the, what was the verb? Accept. Accept the state of Vermont. Um, the, the 2019 unlicensed dog warrant. Okay, got that. Who's taking the minutes? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Is this heavy duty? I think that's. I think that's sufficient. Yep. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. 
So we all we all agree. Yep. Okay, so you're gonna get that into the minutes. <laughs> I'm sure you know how to word it. Can you edit that on the film first? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, before you go anywhere though, just a second. Phil, you made the motion? Yes. Who is it seconded by? That's what I asked. Uh, Matt. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Unanimous? Yes. Yes. The original one prior was made by Matt, was made by you. And who seconded the original one? Filled in. And that was also unanimous. That's the only one here. I'll get that warning off of the uh, off the, the CATV version of it. I'll go back and get it. I won't make you redo it. That's good. I forget it. I'd be happy to try it. I'll read your, your I can read your writing. I'll restate it. So, I think we've come to the end of the agenda. Is there any? Uh, Are post? you all set, Dave? As far as the meeting? Correspondence. Anything else you want? Just want to make sure I get everybody here. Todd. Don't forget Autumn. <laughs> A U T U M N. Yeah, that. It. She, she's in there. I'm good. Is everybody good? Make a motion, we adjourn. Okay, we're done. That's good. Short um, Not uh, You have kind of bad news today. Well, they still think you can, they can save his eye, but.